I'm Jim Hutchinson, New Jersey, Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. Now, Mike Caruso, also with the Fisherman Magazine, publisher and owner. And today we've got a really special day. We're down here on the Jersey Shore, uh, Brick to be specific. Got you here in my hometown today. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, Jim knows this area like the back of his hands. And as usual, over the last couple of weeks, it's on. I mean, we're seeing fish really throughout the uh, the stretch of the of the beach here, birds and bait and whales. So I'm looking out over the shoulder. We got a couple of humpbacks feeding off offshore. We're just talking to a captain, a uh, friend of mine, who's just off the beach here because there's acres of birds outside and they're catching a mixed size class of striped bass. They're on sand eels, adult bunker, peanut bunker. It's November and you would think November at the Jersey Shore is kind of like roll up the sidewalks. We're done for the season, but this is the greatest time to fish. Traveling with a with a tackle box in the back of the, I mean, the whole truck is a tackle box. Absolutely, it's a tackle box. But what's really cool about today is we got some special guests with us. We have Glenn Hughes and Mike Wayne from the ASA, the American Sport Fishing Association, uh, who really is our watchdog for the fishery and very involved with uh, fisheries management, marine conservation, and I was actually here, we're on the eve of the Folsom Tackle Show, uh, which they'll be, they'll be there actually uh, integrating with the New Jersey trade. And so we're all out here together enjoying some great weather and some good fishing. And uh, come check it out. It's going to be a good day. Sand eels, bunker, we got it all. Jenny's got a fish. I'm going back out. I'm there. going out too. Let's go. Glenn Hughes, president of the American Sport Fishing Association. The big question I have is, what the heck does ASA do? So the American Sport Fishing Association is the association that represents the sport fishing industry and the entire recreational fishing community. We've been out there for 90 years making sure that we have clean water, abundant fisheries, and access to those fish. So you don't, so ASA isn't really just about the industry. ASA has to do with the customers, our customers as well. I mean, and That's right. Well, to make sure that we help the industry out, the industry needs customers. And so right now there's 54 million people that went fishing last year. And we, we have to make sure that they have the ability to fish. That means still being able to use lead fishing tackle, being able to use soft plastics, making sure that they have access to all the public lands and waters that we have across this great land. So when, when I say customers, but when the anglers are going to the tackle shop and they're buying their favorite rod, the reel, the lures and all that, they've got some juice on the, on the national or on the federal side to, to help out. So what, what are kind of the biggest issues that you see at the ASA right now impacting our anglers? So when we think about ASA and what we do as far as fisheries policy, it's freshwater and it's saltwater. About 75% of the people still freshwater fish. And so they're dealing a little bit more with access issues and, and things that involve, say, being able to use lead fishing tackle on public lands and things. The federal fisheries, the issue, the, most of the fisheries that are the three miles offshore along our east coast, is really what seems to impact that 25%. And so when it comes to NOAA trying to do things like have a, a right whale vessel speed reduction, or when we have restrictions on red snapper in the southeast, uh, up here we've got to really take a lot of time to monitor the, the uh, striped bass fishery. So, there's so many different things that are going on at any given time and one we, we want to make sure that we have a solid fishery without the fish we don't have the anglers either if we don't have the anglers we're not going to be selling fishing tackle so let's have a solid fishery so that we have the anglers and so that we sell fishing tackle glenn you're originally from pennsylvania so i know you've probably fished these beaches before at the jersey shore i, I had a great opportunity to uh, grow up outside of philadelphia go birds <laughs> And, uh, and spend a lot of my time, of course, anybody from Philadelphia goes from Atlantic City South, spent summers uh, also in Cape May, New Jersey, and got to fish off the beach there and off some boats. And so really enjoyed this whole fishery. 
And also, besides growing up and, and, and spending my summers in the Poconos of Pennsylvania, I got to spend more than 20 years in the, in the fishing magazine business, about 25 years. And so I got to do a lot of great fishing, not only off the Jersey coast, but along the entire East Coast, into the Caribbean, of course, the, the, the Gulf of Mexico, uh, and then the West Coast and down through uh, Latin America, et cetera. So I've gotten to do a lot of great fishing, but there's something about coming home and being able to, even in this cold, almost December day, find stripers off the beach, it's special. So we'll get into that final question is, you know, you mentioned Atlantic and Cape May County, and it's kind of strange the last bunch of years, probably going 15, maybe 20 years, our striper bite into the winter here in the beaches of Ocean County and Monmouth County has just been fantastic. You did a little bit of fishing today, yeah. snow flurries, a gale. You know, what was your take on the, the, the warning it's, striper bite? You know, the, there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad gear, right? <laughs> And so, you know, we're all warm. You know, we're, we're enjoying ourselves out here. I'm jealous of this fishery. Just three hours away is where I am in, in Annapolis, Maryland. And, and the Chesapeake Bay, it's been tough. It's been a tough summer. It's been a tough couple of years. And so it's great. It's exciting to see that the fish are here and there's opportunities for anglers to get out and enjoy themselves. And, and these retailers to sell a lot more fishing tackle this fall. And Mike, your position is? I'm the Atlantic Fisheries Policy Director for the American Sport Fishing Association. And so I cover fisheries policy work in the Mid-Atlantic and New England regions, species everybody cares about, striped bass, summer flounder, scop, black sea bass, tatog, uh, cobia. And we try to give the industry a voice at the fisheries management table and also try to help uh, advance and advocate on behalf of anglers that that industry serves with all the tackle, the apparel, everything that we provide uh, the community. Mike, before you were at ASA, you also ran uh, the fishery management plan for striped bass at the ASMFC and you work for NOAA Fisheries. So you bring a lot of background to this discussion. How does that help us uh, in the further management of striped bass? Yeah, so a lot has changed since a year ago, huh, Jim? So the board, uh, the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission took emergency action. They were concerned about the rebuilding prospects of the population. And uh, so they decided to narrow the slot. And uh, right now they're looking to do a few other things that help kind of solidify the changes that they made with that emergency action, uh, look at implementing a maximum size in the Chesapeake Bay, um, this question about mode splits, whether there should be separate measures for, for hire versus private anglers, that's being considered. Um, <clears throat> and then also the commercial fishery, as you know, emergency action didn't do anything to address that. So those are the short term things kind of in the works right now. Longer term, um, we're hoping that the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission falls into a little bit more of a stable looking at stock assessments, seeing what the projections look like in terms of rebuilding, and then making management changes around those stock assessment timeframes. So uh, there's one coming later in 2024. There's another one on the schedule for 2026 and 2027. 
So um, there's several assessments coming up and those will be the time periods where the board will really look, okay, what's the population doing? What, how is our fishery impacting that projected rebuilding and um, make adjustments on that? And so my role specifically is to work through those procs, pros, excuse me, work through that process, work with the fishery managers, make sure they understand the concerns of the entire fishery, whether you're fishing on the beach in New Jersey or up uh, off Cape Cod. So, uh, you know, the fishery is really diverse. We've got a lot of folks that love to catch striped bass. And so making sure that all those viewpoints are captured in the fishery management discussion is right where we, we thrive. So it's a unique perspective because striped bass is, there's, there's a lot of diversity in terms of the way people fish and where they fish and where the best bite is from one year to the next or one month to the other. But really specifically, it's an emotional fishery, right? A lot of emotion built into this. And a lot of folks also talk about the fact that, oh, well, that ASA, they are just concerned with industry, right? And it's not just that, because you have a different perspective. You did the fishery management plan at the ASMFC, you worked for NOAA. Get, go into that. that you, we, we care about, kind of go into the aspect that we care about fish the fishermen and the fishing industry too. It's all about the same yeah, thing. Yeah, absolutely. This is not a one or the other. We can do conservation and still have access to the resource and have a thriving industry that supports all of that. So, I mean, that's, that's really where we focus our conversations. And you're right, it helps to have working strong relationships with the folks making the policy decisions. And having, getting, the opportunity to come here and witness it firsthand and participate as an angler in this New Jersey fishery that's been lights out for several years now is really an important perspective to bring to those managers that aren't getting this, uh, you know, on almost December 1st. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's a really unique role that I serve for the industry and our association. And it's important to bring those diverse voices to the table so that they're not just hearing from one group or another, they're getting the whole full spectrum picture of the fishery and the industry that supports it. So I, yeah, I love doing the work. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, we're managing people, right? So uh, it's about establishing good working relationships with the policy decision makers and making sure they understand the challenges, the impacts, and the rewards of the decisions that they make. So the morning started out here at the Jersey Shore with the sand eels, tins and teasers. You see no more of that. We've gone to the top water as things have absolutely exploded here at Island Beach State Park. November into December, the seasons continue. The bait runs from bunker to sand eels to herring and butterfish. It's an amazing time. And I'm so happy to see Glenn and Mike get into this Jersey juice. But I think now I'm gonna get back into it myself. Mm-hmm.